Welcome to Cherry Grove Baptist Church. This is Pastor Tim McCann, and our live broadcast will begin very shortly. Thanks for watching today, and we pray that you'll be blessed by the praiseful singing and benefited by the scriptural preaching of God's Word. Cherry Grove Baptist Church is located in the northwestern section of North Carolina. If you're ever in our area, we certainly would love to have you come visit with us. Our service times here at Cherry Grove Baptist Church are every Sunday morning at 9.45 for Sunday school, then 10.45 for the worship service. Every Sunday evening we begin at 6 p.m. and every Wednesday night we meet at 7 p.m. Thanks again today for watching our broadcast. God bless you is our prayer. Welcome to Cherry Grove Baptist Church. This is Pastor Tim McCann, and our live broadcast will begin very shortly. Thanks for watching today, and we pray that you'll be blessed by the praiseful singing and benefited by the scriptural preaching of God's Word. Cherry Grove Baptist Church is located in the northwestern section of North Carolina. If you're ever in our area, we certainly would love to have you come visit with us. Our service times here at Cherry Grove Baptist Church are every Sunday morning at 9.45 for Sunday school, then 10.45 for the worship.
right. Well, I do appreciate you for being here this morning, and happy, happy Mother's Day. And uh, the preacher was asking this morning, are you happy? And he said, are you happy, happy? Are you happy, happy, happy? And uh, if you're a mama, you ought to be happy. And, uh, and so if you're alive, you ought to be happy because you got a mama. That's what that means. And uh, happy Mother's Day to our mothers this morning. Appreciate you so much for being here. And if you're here this morning visiting with your mom, I appreciate you being here. Listen, me and my wife was talking about this yesterday. There's no greater gift you can give to your mother than sitting beside of her in church. And uh, every Sunday. All right? And uh, not just today, but every Sunday. And uh, it'd be a good thing for you. I, I prom- it won't hurt you at all. So uh, it'll help you. I promise you that. But I appreciate you for being here. And it is a special day in that it's Mother's Day. It's a special day in that uh, this is the start of our week of revival, too. And, uh, and I'm excited about it. Excited to have Dr. Beckham uh, with us and Miss Jeanette today. And uh, they'll be with us through Wednesday night. And then Brother Granville Branch will be here Thursday, Friday night. And, uh, and I'm excited about each of them. And uh, here in a few more days, I guess next Sunday, we'll be having another baptism. And uh, so if you've been saved, I know I've got a couple to baptize, but if you've been saved and ain't been baptized, you need to let me know, and, uh, and we'll get you in next Sunday, all right? And so that'll be next Sunday right after service. And uh, so don't forget about that. Uh, Stone Center will be singing at the Stone Center for the Cancer Society program on May the 24th at 6.30, so don't forget about that. And uh, then youth camp's coming up. Brother Jonathan has sent out a link if you're in the text. And if you're not in that text, you need to get in it. But there's a link there to sign your kid up, all right? So be sure to go pre-register and get that registration done. And, uh, and that way we've got everybody lined up, okay? And the ages this year is from 10 years old uh, up to 18, 19. Is that what it is? And uh, so don't forget about that. We're down in Winston this year, and, uh, and so it'll be a good, good time. You can come visit them. You can go to the services in the evening. You can go in the morning if you want to. And uh, Brother Ricky Gravely, I believe, believe it is, he'll be preaching the main uh, services. And so be praying for that, praying for them. God to use it. Uh, and then on June the 12th, mark your calendars for this. We'll have an ordination service here, and, and I'm going to be ordaining Brother Jonathan. And uh, that'll be at 6 o'clock on June the 12th, all right? And uh, we'll have some other preachers here and uh, that'll be speaking, or one other that'll be speaking, then a couple that'll be on his council. And uh, as we uh, question him, make sure he's right with God. And so, uh, and then we'll have a big meal following that and a uh, time of fellowship, and that'll be June the 12th. So mark your calendar for that. And uh, so we don't forget about that. All right. And then right after service this morning, Lord willing, uh, we're going to, uh, we got a gift for all you mothers. So don't forget about that. Uh, so don't jet out of here. All right. We want to give you something, just a little something and uh, tell you how much we appreciate you and thank you and uh, for being mama. All right. And if your kids didn't get you nothing, just take this and go get yourself something. All right. And uh, it's from them too. All right. Let me give you the birthdays this week. Miss Connie Turner's 5'8". Uh, Miss Molly Billings, Braden Tuttle. Uh, Jessica McCann turns 20 years old this week. Can y'all believe that? And then Andreas Rendon. And so a happy birthday to all y'all. And I hope you have a happy, happy, happy birthday. And, uh, and this, this, this week's uh, missionaries, Jason Dow, Nebraska, Jeremy Cooley, and, uh, and I'm not even going to say where he's at because I don't know how to say that word. So it starts with an L and ends with an N. So let's chichen or something. Is that how, what is it? Yep, that's where he's at. Y'all say lick and shine. <laughs> and uh, so I don't know where he's at, but he's on a foreign field somewhere preaching the gospel. So you pray for him this week. And, uh, and if you don't know how to say that word when you're praying, you just say, Lord, help this man in this community where he's at. And so, hey, listen, we got church every night. We'll be back tonight at 6 o'clock and uh, 5.30 in the prayer room. And then uh, we'll meet on uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the rest of the week's on 7 o'clock, all right? So only tonight at 6 o'clock, the rest of the week be 7 o'clock, 6.30 uh, prayer room. And, uh, and so if you can get here for that, I know it'll be a blessing. And uh, invite somebody to come be with you this, this week. And, uh, and again, I'm thankful for you for being here this morning. I'm excited. I've uh, been praying a lot about what God would do in this meeting. And uh, one of the big things I've prayed is God to remove all hindrances from the meeting. And uh, we don't want that, no grieving of the Holy Ghost of God by any means. And uh, I want to see God moving these days. Listen, if you don't think our world's in a mess... You messed up, and uh, you're messed up, and our world is in a mess, and, uh, but greater than that 
the church is in a mess and in a big mess. And so uh, we need revival in this day and hour. We're living in the craziest days of my life and probably any senior saint here would say, preacher, it's the craziest days of my life. And, uh, and it's gonna get crazier. But listen, we're the church. We need to be shining brighter and brighter and brighter in these last days. And, uh, and I believe the direct result of prayer will do that. And uh, we'll be everything God wants us to be. So I hope you come back and be with us tonight. Tomorrow night and all through next week, come be with us. And uh, I know the devil's got a thousand excuses for you to stay at home this week. You can either listen to him and make them and, and agree with them. And, uh, or you can say, you know what, God, I need you. And, uh, and if you don't need God, stay at home. But listen, I, this preacher needs God. So you come be with us this week and uh, we will have a good time. All right. Be praying. Uh, for the Walker family, I mentioned uh, to, during prayer week this last week, and uh, Brother Hurley's mother passed away. So if you would be praying for that family, God touch them and God help them and, uh, in these days. All right, Brother Brian, if you'll pray for us. Amen. 183 in the green book. Oh, how I love Jesus. 183. Sing it out. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name. Verse number two. It tells me of a Savior son who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, a sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, appreciate you again for being here this morning and I'm going to ask Dr. Beckham to come on and get ready and uh, and then we got some special singing this morning Jeremiah I don't know where he is y'all ready and uh
failed you and uh, and thank god he ain't gonna start today neither and uh, that's my hope and knowing that and uh, how many of you have never heard dr beckham before would you raise your hand up right quick i'm not gonna pick on you and uh some have some have all right well everybody supposedly has heard you all right okay and uh so he ain't no stranger here and a good friend of mine i love him to death and i hope you'll uh, hear what God has for you this morning, and uh, that's why you come here to see what he has, and I promise he'll give you something, all right? Brother Beckham, you come up. All right. Thank you, preacher. I love you. All right. I always say to the preacher, I love you. We need to love our preacher, don't we? And, and then I, when I'm along with the preacher, I say, you know, you ought to love your people. Amen? And he should, shouldn't he? Yes, sir. And... Um, yeah, well, it's good to be here. Boy, I enjoyed Sunday school. Amen. I did. I enjoy. You, you're an enjoyable a group of people to preach to, and I learned to love you down through the years, and I love to hear you sing. Love to just play around with some of you, and and just you know, I just enjoy it all. 
And um, let me call your attention this morning to James chapter 4 and verse 2. And I will say to the mothers, uh, happy, happy, happy Mother's Day. And um, we will be... We will be dealing not with the mothers this morning, but we will be dealing with all of us. And um, I'll throw in a plug here and there about the mothers also. Because mothers are wonderful, aren't they? Amen. Amen. And um, my mother went to heaven when I was 24. Dad remarried when I was 27. And the lady I called mom... She lived to be 96, went to be with the Lord a couple years ago, and uh, she she was my mom longer than my mother was my mother, and just I've been honored to have uh, two ladies, special ladies, godly ladies in my life uh, as my mom and my mother, and I've had the honor of having two godly wives, uh, Diane for 31 years, and uh, and then Jeanette. Can you believe it? Almost seven years will be in June, and um, just wonderful time. James chapter four. Let's stand. I want to preach on this met on this subject this morning. The power of prayer. Aren't you glad we have that, uh, have that tool uh, to help us to get through this crazy old world that we have to live in? Matthew 21, verse 13, if you'll turn there too. Sometimes I read it, sometimes I don't. But this morning, let's read it. Jesus is actually quoting Isaiah 56 in verse 7 uh, when he, when he, here in 21, verse 13. Matthew 21 and verse 13, the Bible says, My house shall be called the house of prayer. And again, he's quoting Isaiah 56 and verse 7. But look with me in James chapter 4 and verse 2. James chapter 4 and verse 2. People will ask me, why aren't we having revival in America? Why are our church services dead? Why don't we see people get saved, Brother Beckham? Because we haven't asked God to do it. Amen. Listen to James 4, verse 2. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Father, I thank you again for Sunday school. I thank you for this wonderful day that we are celebrating our mothers. And Lord, I do pray that every mother around the world will be honored today. And Lord, every mother in this room will have a great day. And Father, help me now to be loving and caring Help me to be sensitive, please. And Lord, I just pray for that lost one that may be here under the hearing of my voice. Lord, that they'll say yes to your tender voice as you speak to them about the greatest gift in all the world, and that is salvation. Thank you. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Adrian Rogers, a great preacher, said, Prayer can do anything God can do, and God can do anything. Isn't that good? Prayer can do anything that God can do, and God can do anything. 
R.A. Torrey said, prayer is the key that unlocks all the storehouses of God's infinite grace and power. Oh, Billy Sunday, the great Presbyterian evangelist and famous ball player, said, if you are a stranger to prayer, you are a stranger to the greatest source of power known to human to the human beings. And I say amen to that. Uh, we can't look into history and see, uh, we can look into history and see the power of prayer on almost every page. It was Jonathan Edwards' call to prayer that brought the great awakening. And what a great awakening it was. And uh, you remember the, pre uh, the, the sermon that he preached, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. And he, he preached it, uh, he was nearsighted, and he put the sermon up to his eyes like this, and he read it with two men holding lanterns on each side. And as he, as he read, people began to hold the pillars of the church and the pews of fear of falling into the pits of hell. And it was a great awakening. It was the great revival of 1857 when Jeremiah Lanfear, a Dutch reform guy, uh, got a burden for one million people to be saved. And, you know, he said one night in a prayer meeting, listen, church, I have a burden to pray for one million people to get saved. And I have the faith in my God and confidence in God that he will do it if we ask him. And so he met at 12 o'clock the next day. And as he prayed, uh, there was three more with him, and then four, and then 10, and then 15, and then uh, 1,000, and then 4,000, and 5,000. And in 10, five, six months' time, there were 10,000 men praying in one location. And in one year's time, the recorders of people that gotten saved told Brother Landfear, Mr. Landfear, you prayed that a million people would be saved. And I want you to know we have reached our goal. Over a million people has gotten saved by the good grace of God. Back then when people got saved, they got saved. They didn't just join the church. They didn't just turn over a new leaf. Amen. But they, and there was another uh, awakening took place. And then we read of D.L. Moody and Charles Finney and George Whit Whitfield and Billy Sunday and C.H. Spurgeon and um, Tim Mahan. Hello? Yes. Your pastor is just as great as those men were. And we brag about those men all the time. I'm so sick and tired of hearing about Finney and Whitfield. Why can't we talk about the Tim McCanns and the Andy Wellses and, and men that we know that are godly men and preach the word of God with power? Amen. I think we need to brag about our men of God today. And so when, when I turn to this text, I see the problem uh, in our churches. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. You're not praying. God said you're not praying. You're just coming to church. You're just going through the motions. That's all you're doing. You're not asking me to send revival. When was the last time you asked God to send revival? When was the last time you asked God to save uh, some lost soul or a million lost souls? How many of us have the faith to get upon our knees and pray for a million people to get saved? Back in the day, buddy, a Christian was a Christian. And they had fearless confidence. Amen. And when they prayed, they had confidence. 
confidence that God was going to hear them because they were living sacrifice, sanctified lives and mortified lives. And boy, when they got on their knees, they turned heaven upside down. Amen. Because they believed what the Bible said. If you ask me, I'll give it to you. If you ask in my will, if you don't ask in my will, you won't have it. And so uh, the average Christian, as I look at the average Christian, they are asking questions. And they ask me questions like this. Why am I not making any progress in my Christian life, Brother Beckham? And I always look them in the eyeball. And I always look with, with love in my heart and concern in my heart. And I say, well, are you praying? And they just bow their head. Another will say, why do I have so little victory over sin, Brother Beckham? I have sin. I enjoy sin in my life. I can't get victory over it. And I'll ask them again, eyeball to eyeball. Uh, love in my heart. Amen. Oh, brother, sister, are you a praying? Are you praying? Are you, do you have a relationship with the Lord? If you don't, you will never have victory over sin. And then another will ask me, why do I win so few souls to Christ? Well, if you don't have a burden for lost people, you're not going to uh, win anybody to the Lord. And if you're not walking with the Lord, if you don't have a relationship with the Lord, if you're not in your prayer closet, you're not going to have a burden to see people get saved. You have to pray. And another one will ask me, why do I grow so slowly in the likeness of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Well, you have to have a relationship with someone to grow in them. Amen. And, and you have to talk to them. You have to have that relationship with them. And if you don't have that, you, didn't, you don't have anything. You're not gonna, you're gonna be very, you're not gonna be Christ-like. You're not gonna think like Christ. You're not gonna love like Christ. You're not gonna pray like Christ did. You're not gonna have the attitude that Christ did until you go back into the prayer closet and get a, reacquainted with Him. Amen. Then the average preacher in America is in a mess. Amen. Preachers are in a mess. I'm telling you, they are in a mess. They'll ask me, why is it that I see so little fruit in my ministry? And I ask them, uh, I say, listen, sir, out of respect, uh, do, are you a praying man? You say, Brother Beckham, you mean to tell me that you go into a church and a preacher asks that question? You ask him if he's a praying man? All preachers pray, don't you know that, Brother Beckham? They all pray for hours every day, don't you know that? No, I don't know that. No, I don't know that. I did. I, when I was a pastor, listen, I was one of those. I was one. I was busy. Like I said in Sunday school, I was busy uh, writing books and doing all that stuff. But I wasn't busy with with having a relationship with the Lord, a walking, talking relationship with God, praying and fasting. Amen. For me to have a relationship before God can ever use you to to be a blessing to others, He's got to be a blessing to you. Amen. Then, why are there so few conversions in my ministry, Brother Beckham? Why does my church grow so slowly? Why are the members of my church so little helped by my ministry and build up so little in Christian knowledge and faith? See, if we know to do good and doeth it not, it is sin. If, if we regard iniquity in our heart, the Lord will not hear us. Preachers, I, let me tell you, if we have preachers here, and I know I do uh, this morning, but let me say, uh, get back into the prayer closet. Get acquainted with the prayer closet again, preachers. Uh, uh, fast and pray. Live for God. Amen. And then the average church, we can't leave you out, can we? Uh, the average church says, why is it that the church is making such slow progress in the world today? If it's not 
not a house of prayer, you're not going to make any progress. You're going to just sit here on this property and go through the motions. Amen. Uh, another question. Why is it, why does it make so little headway against sin, against unbelief, against error in all of its form? Brother Beckham, why do we, why do we have to fight members of the church because they are drinking the liquor and they are cussing and they're uh, committing adultery and they're uh, in pornography? and they're all, and all this stuff. Why can't, why can't we have a clean church? Because you're not praying. Because you don't have a relationship with God. Amen. And, uh, and then another question. Why is the average church member living on such a low plane of Christian living? Uh, you will always be on a low plane until you get on the high plane that the prayer closet puts you on. Amen. Amen. And then, why does the Lord get so little honor from the state of the church today? Because the church is dead. It's almost like the church of Sarkis. Amen. It had a name, it liveth. And Jesus said, you got a good reputation. You got a good choir. You got a, you got a good soul winning program. And, or it looks like it. You got this and you got that. And then he looks back and he stares you right in your heart. He doesn't look on the outside. He looks on the inside. And when he looks on the inside, he says, you are dead. Amen. We got to get alive again, church. We got to get back to the lifeline. And, and the lifeline of the church is what? It is prayer. My church shall, my, my house shall be called the house of prayer. Now, turn with me to the book of Acts. We're going to go through the book of Acts for a little while. Acts chapter 2 and verse 47. When we read the book of Acts, we find a story of constant victory. A story of perpetual progress. Amen. We read, for example, in Acts 2 and verse 47, the Lord added <coughs> to the church daily, such as should be saved. When was the last time you saw people get saved at Cherry Grove Baptist Church? I know you got some to be baptized, and boy, I got excited about that. Amen. Last uh, last uh, few months, I've seen people get baptized. I have heard people getting saved. And boy, when I when I hear about someone uh, getting off the road of hell and getting on the road of heaven, like I said in Sunday school, I don't need a banjo a playing or a drum playing or or a mandolin playing to get excited. Uh, when I hear that an old sinner lost lost on his way to hell, get saved and get baptized, join the church, grow in the grace of God, I get excited. Amen. And, and so here in the book of Acts, and by the way, this is the best manual to how to build a church. You want to build a church, you don't have to go uh, 3,000 miles somewhere to go to a leadership conference or a leadership seminar to learn how to, 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 to have revival. Bible. Amen. Uh, this book right here, the book of Acts, in this book, uh, oh boy, it will tell you how to build a church. Uh, Acts 2, 47 again, and the Lord added, the Lord, not some soul winner, not some program, not some bus ministry, but the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now the Lord uses those things. Things, but if it's just those things without the Lord being in part of it, uh, you don't have much. All you have is a bunch of uh, uh, programs. And uh, I much rather have God. Look in Acts 4 and verse 4. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, 
and the number of the men was about 5,000. You saw it now, Brother Beckham, you don't believe that for one minute, do you? I do. I'm one of those nuts that believes the Word of God. And in the Bible says that they were saved daily, and then it says they heard the Word again, and the number of the men, just men, 5,000 men got saved. And then in Acts 5, verse 14, I know I'm going fast, but I, I, I got to because this is a five-hour message. I need to go. I need to go fast. Acts 5, verse 14, And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both, men and women, Acts 5, 14. Acts 5, verse 6, Acts Six, Acts 6 and verse 7. And the word of God and the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. And as we go through the book of Acts, in every one of the 27 chapters, after the first chapter, we find some note of victory. Why, were, why did they have victory? They had victory because they had unity, and they prayed together, and they was full of the Holy Ghost, and they preached the Word with boldness. And that's the reason why this church was on fire. And this Cherry Grove Baptist Church can get on fire the same way that this church did if you want it. If you don't want it, you will never get it. Amen? You got to want it. You got to want it. You don't just want it, but you got to ask for it. And if you ask not, you will have not. Amen. Look in Acts 2 verse 47 again. And the church added, and the, and the church added, no sir, and the Lord added to the church daily, day by day, such as should be saved. You know what that tells me? That tells me that they were praying daily. They were living for God daily. And that's the reason God was blessing them daily. If you're just a, a, a Sunday Christian uh, or a Sunday believer, I should say, uh, you're not going to grow very much. You're not going to have too much uh, in your life. You're not going to have much excitement. Uh, if you're just one of these, hey, if you're just a Mother's Day uh, believer, you're not going to be much for God. Amen. Yeah. If you're just a Christmas Day believer, you're you're not going to be much for God. If you're just an Easter morning uh, believer, you're not going to be much for God. Amen? Uh, it's an everyday thing, church. It's an everyday thing. It's not just these holidays. And, uh, and I'm glad you come. I'm glad you're with your mother today. But I, it would be much better if you come back next Sunday when it's not Mother's Day. And um, uh, so uh, day by day, this church, this mighty church, this, this early church in the book of Acts, uh, just saw a lot. Of, saw a lot of activity. They saw a lot of people get saved. Oh boy. Uh, uh, you know, sometimes I wish I could go back to the, and, and just live a week in the early church. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Uh, they probably throw me out on my ear. I, I'm so backslidden. These folks wasn't backslidden. These folks were on fire for God. Amen. And, uh, and then I hear this crowd, this crazy crowd, this bunch of fundamentalist independent Baptists. I, now that's, that's my crowd. Amen. I, I are one of you. Amen. Yes, sir. But they, they make my head hurt. They make my little ball head hurt sometimes. Independent, fundamental, Baptist, King James, only no mixed swimming, no television watching. They make my head hurt. Oh. And I, I hear things come out of their mouth like, Brother Beckham, sir, I love you. Okay, get over the mushy stuff. Go ahead and tell me what you're going to tell me. You know, you know why I'm not sold out to God? I said, because you back, 
because you're backslidden. Amen. That's what I want to say to them. Because you have to be loving. You have to be caring. And uh, But when I hear this kind of stuff right here, because I write it down. I write it down in my notes where I can preach on it. Because it's pure sin. Uh, uh, someone said, Brother Beckham, the reason why the church is not living for God is because... Uh, now, Brother Beckham, you, you're a pretty intelligent man. Uh, you know uh, the opposition that we face today as Christians. It is so severe. I just had a migraine. The headache turned into a migraine. I'm telling you. What, what we are facing today is child's play compared to the men and ladies and the children that, that you read about in the Fox Book of Martyrs. Amen. Oh, how, when was the last time you seen a couple put between two horses and pulled in two? When was the last time you seen a human being put in a pot of oil and boiled like a pig? Huh? That's what the early Christians went through. They had their heads cut off. They had their hands cut off, their arms. And, 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 and that's opposition, the little bit of stuff that we have gone through. But I'll tell you what, if we live uh, much longer, we may face some opposition right here in America if we don't wake up. Because let me tell you, church, God, uh, God sent AIDS years ago. Now well, let's go back to 1917. He sent that flu that killed hundreds of thousands of people uh, over a hundred years ago. And then AIDS came and, and then uh, that killed a bunch of people. And then COVID came and that's killed millions of people. And you know, God's not talking to America anymore. God is not only, God is talking to the world. He's saying, world, you better wake up. Up. You better wake up because uh, you won't. You may. You may not have to read the book of martyrs, uh, Fox Book of Martyrs, to see opposition because it's going to be right at your door. Amen. It's going to be right at the church door. It wouldn't. Have, it wouldn't. Uh, uh, wouldn't surprise me one bit if if we don't get back using the power of prayer. If we don't get back in the prayer closet, it would wouldn't surprise me if we didn't face some severe opposition uh, in, in this country in the next uh, few months or maybe in the next few years. Uh, but we're going to have to face it because my God says, uh, I, I, I uh, chasten those that I love. And there's people in America that he loves. And he'll chasten us. He'll whip us. He'll spank us. Amen. And then I want you to turn with me. Aren't we having fun? Look in Acts 2 and verse 42. The Bible says, Why did this church grow so fastly, Brother Beckham? Well, look at it. And they continued. They continued. They got saved and they continued. In the steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. They continued. They got on fire and they didn't let the devil put the fire out. They continued. People today, they join the church and live for God for a little while. I call them yo-yo believers, in and out, in and out, on fire today, nothing next day, on fire tomorrow, nothing the next day. But, but these people, they continued, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship breaking of bread and prayers. This is a brief but very success, a, a, a very brief picture of the early church. It was a praying church. It was a preaching church. And they continued in every bit of it. Now my question to you, are you continuing 
Are you living for God? Are you praying to God? Are you using the power that is in your life? It may be that's the reason why the home is on shaky grounds because you're not continuing. You've got to continue. Amen? Now, I want to read this verse to you. Acts 6 and verse 4. Oh my. I got to ask you a very important question. This is important. Acts 6, 4, I'm waiting on everyone to get there, okay? I want you to, it's an important part of this sermon. Acts 6, 4, this is what the people said. But we will, not might, not if we have time, not if we, not if, no, He's, they said, we will give ourselves continually to prayer. Would you look up here just for a moment? Here's what I don't understand. I didn't understand it when I was, when I was in that, that same predicament that some of you may be in. These people said, we will. There was no hesitation. Nothing. Well, I have to look at my calendar. I have to check with my job. I have to check with my husband. I have to check with my wife. I have to check with the, my children. I have to check. Brother Beck, my, I just can't say that right now because, see, sir, I got so much. I'm a busy person, Brother Beckham. That may be your problem. That was my problem years ago. These people just made up their mind that they were going to live for God. Why? Because they were sold out. And there's people in churches right this morning that are being challenged as you are and as I am. The Holy Ghost is saying, Benny, are you willing to tell this church that you will continue in this doctrine of prayer? That you will continue to walk with God? That you're going to give Him everything? Even after 21 years of traveling the world over and preaching on prayer, writing magazines and books and articles on prayer, Brother Begum, are you still willing to give yourself continually? You're getting older. You're getting older. Are you still willing to continue with your relationship with the Lord. That's what prayer is. That's what prayer is, Brother McCann. That's what prayer is. And the Holy Ghost is wanting us to answer that this morning. I don't know. I don't know what you're going to do. You may be sitting there arguing with the Holy Ghost right now. You may be sitting there saying, uh, it's, it's not my problem, it's the Lord's problem. No, it's not the Lord's problem. 
Would you look in Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2 in closing? Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. I hear people blame God. It's God's fault, Brother Beckham. You think his hand may be shortened? You think his ears are full of wax? What's the problem, Brother Beckham? I go to church, I read my Bible, I go so where I do all this stuff. When I can. It's not what he wants. He doesn't want part of us. We are to present all of ourselves to God. Amen. I'm just telling you. And I know you have a Bible preaching preacher here. And I know he's told you this before. I guarantee you this is not the first time you have heard this. Isaiah 59, and Isaiah, I believe, was tired. Behold the Lord's hand. He, he looked them right in the eyes. The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. I, don't, I think he's, uh, he said it very lovingly, but I believe he also said it very sternly. And then he says, but your iniquities has separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Why don't we see the power of God anymore in our churches? Why don't we see great awakenings happen? Because we're not willing to continue. Are you willing this morning to get off that pew Come up to the front. Look at God. God, I'm not much, but I'm willing to give myself continually to you so that my home can be blessed, so my church can be blessed, so I can be blessed. I'm willing. If we're going to tell him we love him, let's prove it. Amen? Let's not just be sayers. Let's not just be hearers. Let's be doers. I would love to see revival sweep across America again. But it's going to start with you and me. It's going to start with Cherry Grove Baptist Church. This week, God's talking to you right now. What are you saying back to him? Are you, are you looking at this kind of like it's an optional thing? Can I, can I close with this? In the morning, are those of you that works on Sunday and you go to work today, and your supervisor walks in and said, Tom, I want to talk to you for a minute. Some papers just came down from headquarters. It looks like there's some pretty stiff rules that are going to be in your department. And knowing you, you're not going to like them. But if you don't sign this piece of paper, being your supervisor, I'm going to have to ask you to leave the property. I'm going to have to fire you if you're not willing. You look over the piece of paper, your face turned red with anger. You look at the supervisor. This is not fair. I've been here 25 years. 
This is not fair. No, I'm not signing it. But do you understand? If you don't sign it, you're going to lose your retirement. You're going to lose everything. Not just your job, you're going to lose everything. You're going to have to start over somewhere. You know what you would do? Because I know, I know some men that has been in that predicament with all this COVID stuff. You know what you would do? You would think about that check. You would think about your mortgage. You would think about your wife and kids, how they would need that check. And you know what you would do? Most, most men would do. Where do I sign? I still don't agree with it, but I can't do without this job. Guess what? We can't do without the power of God either. And that's where we at this morning. This is decision time for everybody in here, not just preachers, but for everybody. And God is saying, this is your lifeline. This is where you're going to receive my power. This is where you're going to be blessed and Are you willing? And then he has asked me to ask you. And I'm trying to ask as gentle as I can. And as loving as I can. Because, see, God is speaking through my mouth you do you love me he asked Peter that now he's asking you through me I hear you say you love me but do you love me enough to give me your all and live for me do you really love me? Let's stand. As our pianist comes, we won't have singing, but we'll... This is Pastor Tim McCann. I want to take this time and say thank you for listening to today's broadcast and also tell you a little bit more about our church. Our service times here at Cherry Grove Baptist Church are every Sunday morning at 9.45 for Sunday school and then 10.45 for the worship service. Every Sunday evening we gather at 6 p.m. and every Wednesday evening we gather at 7 p.m. Cherry Grove Baptist Church has a strong desire to reach the world with the gospel. And if you've heard something today in today's message and it has you wondering where you would spend eternity, we ask you to please contact us through our website, through email, or even by phone at 336-921-4224. We would love to help you understand how you can receive Christ and He can give you the peace that passes all understanding. And again, we want to say thank you for listening, thank you for watching, and may God bless you as our prayer.